Hi, welcome back. A couple of months ago, I made a video around Microsoft Forms and how we can save the data from that Microsoft Form response into a SharePoint list. And also that Microsoft Form had an attachment option so that you can upload like a document or something like that. And um, the video also showcased how you can save that attachment in the Microsoft uh, SharePoint list item. A viewer asked me if that can be also done uh, in a Microsoft Teams. So instead of just saving it in SharePoint list, to post it in a Microsoft Teams uh, channel. So today we're gonna to take a look how we can do that because what we need to do is that we have to save the file into that um, Microsoft Teams channel folder, which is backed from SharePoint as we know, and then post it in the channel like a notification. Hey, there is a new message, there's a new response from forms, and there's also a new file that you can view. But enough with the theory, let's take a look how we can achieve that. But first, if you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and also that you subscribe to the channel. Have fun. So as you can see here, I have uh, one of my older forms, which is a company car order. And I have here a couple of questions. And at the end, we have this upload file option. This is important because, as I said, we want to showcase how to save that file in Teams. So let's see how this works in um, Power Automate. How can we catch this data after it has been submitted from the user? So if I switch to my Power Automate um, editor, you see that I have already created the flow. So let's go through it and see how this works. First, you need to select the trigger. So for this flow, this is an automated cloud flow. So it needs to have a trigger, which um, yeah will trigger the flow, obviously. And this one is when a new response is submitted. Then you can select the form ID. The form ID can be selected with this dropdown. And as you can see, company card order is my, um, my form. So um, after you select that, you need to get the response details because this one will not give you those details of the data that the user entered. So this is another action called get response details. And then the form ID is the same like no, from the trigger. But what you also need here is the response ID. This response ID uh, is being uh, passed from the trigger no, when the response has been submitted. So if we take a look on one of my runs here, uh, let's see, let's go back like that and see one of the latest runs. Get response details will bring us all the information back. Now we have here the upload model picture, which is, uh, let's go to the form again, which is this, uh, the attachment option. And then we have the first name, transmission last time, I mean, it's, it's a bit, not in that order that I have it here because I have here first name, last name, employee ID. He is shown a little bit different. So the attachment is at the beginning, first name, then transmission. I don't know why, but anyways, it doesn't matter. So all the information is there. And as you can see, uh, we can we can work with this information. Um, as for the, for, the, for the text responses, that's very easy because you can select this dynamic value and then you can save it in a SharePoint list or post it wherever you like. But the tricky part is the, the attachment uploading because as you can see here, this is a JSON format. It starts with a curly bracket, uh, with a square bracket and continues with a curly bracket. And what we have here, we have the name, we have the link of that file. And as you can see, it's saved in my personal, oops, uh, let's go back. It's saved in my personal SharePoint. And then we have the ID and some other information, reference ID and so on and so forth. So that's some that's in, in, in necessary information that we need to extract that file because you cannot just uh, share this link because is this is my SharePoint, my personal SharePoint. I cannot post this link in, in Teams and expect the other users to be able to see it. That will not work. So what we want to do is we want to extract it from here, save it somewhere where people can access it. That's why what we're doing next is um, we are passing JSON that is that SharePoint file. So let's go back to the run. We see we saw here that this is in a JSON format and um, we can pass this so that we can extract the key value pairs single. 
So what I did is I just did Control A, Control C, just to mark everything and copy it. And then you can um, you can go here and say generate from sample. No, after pasting it, oops, that was not the one. But um, yeah, after copying this one and pasting it here, it will uh, generate this schema um, based on this JSON. Yeah. So I've already done that, and that's why it shows here, as as you can see, and it had recognized uh, this schema. We have name, link, ID, and so on and so forth. Um, also important, of course, you need to tell this past JSON action from where the content is coming from. And so the content is coming from the upload model dynamic um, field, and you can find it here upload model picture which is our uh, question name and this is from the get response details so this comes from this section and then this will generate that uh, json format that, that you can see here uh, and then it, it it shows like this now uh, where we have this this more readable format with name link id and so on and so forth and then we can use this information from the past json in our apply to each loop. Let's take a look what we do here. So the apply to each loop will happen automatically after you have created this get file content uh, action. The important thing to understand is that when a document has been uploaded and submitted from uh, Microsoft Forms, it's not, it's not saved um, in SharePoint or somewhere else. It's saved in OneDrive. So to extract that file you know, that file content we need to go to onedrive and that's exactly what we're doing here so i've created this get file content action and i'm using the id which is a dynamic value coming from my past json so, so that's why we needed that past json so that we can access these dynamic values we have the name link id and everything we need to access that document so we use here the id and as soon as you place the id here this apply to each loop will happen and this body will pop up there because we are getting the ID from the body of our JSON action. So what I did next is in this apply to each loop, I created this create file um, action because as I said, we're grabbing the file from OneDrive and we want to create this file into our Teams. So as you can see here, I have this demo team Enea created and we all know that Teams is backed from uh, SharePoint. So Teams is just a UI for SharePoint. Um, so that's why when you create a new team, you get also a SharePoint as a backend. So as you can see here, if I click on files and you can say open in SharePoint. Why? Because it's, it's practically SharePoint. No? And we have these documents and general file uh, library automatically created. So um, let's go back to Teams and to the post section. As you can see, I've tested it a little bit. And uh, here we are. So we're going to create this file now into our Team uh, SharePoint document library. So what I've done here, I've selected the site address. This is my demo team in here. And the folder path is backslash shared documents so that it can land in my files section here. Uh, but not in general, I'm saving it in documents here, as you can see. Let's delete that so that we, when we test it, it um, works again. Otherwise, it will complain that the file already exists. Um, yeah, so I'm posting, I'm saving it in my shared documents folder in my demo team. But what am I saving? So I need to put file name and the file content. The file name is also coming as a dynamic value from my past JSON. So I'm using this name uh, dynamic value. And the file content is coming from my get file content action, which we did before. So that's the body from my get file content. Yeah. If you click that one, it pops up here. Okay, so now we have created the file. But what we want to do next is we want to post that uh, in our Teams channel. So as you can see here, we created the file maybe in here, but nobody knows it because um, it does not just pop up here by its own. So the request was if we can post a message as well. Uh, I hope I understood that request uh, correctly. So what I'm doing here is I'm just composing this link because I didn't find um, 
a, a link to item or a link to file. Um, I tried to use uh, get file properties and so on. I didn't get any link to that file. Maybe I did something wrong. If you know how to do it, let me know in the comments. Um, so uh, what I did is I know what my root URL is for my SharePoint or uh, for my Teams. So I just place it there then I, um, statically. And then I grabbed the path from my create file action and just place it at the end because this path here, uh, let's take a look from the create file. The path has this slash shared documents and then the name with the ending of the document upload. So that's enough for the user to, um, yeah, for, for this path, no? that's enough for the user to be able to access that document. And next I'm using this post message in a chat or channel action where I'm posting it as a flow bot. So that it looks like this no? with my name via Power Automate and I'm posting it in a channel. And then the team, which is the demo team Manea, this is the one I created for this purpose. And then in the general channel. And then the message is something you can put uh, together by yourself. I just wrote a new file, it's been uploaded via forms, name, I grabbed the display name from the create file action and the location is from, it's the outputs from this composed link action. So if you want to test it, um, I've already posted a response from forms, so I'm going to fill that out again. I'm just going to use the last test and let's close that, close that as well. And now the flow is running. You can see here the apply to each takes a little bit longer, but it runs successfully. And if I go to my um, Teams, I can see here 1057 it's just happened. And um, it says the text that we, we created and we have the name. What I didn't manage to achieve is to create here like a like a link you know, so that you can click it. What the user will have to do in this case is uh, you can copy and paste that and then it will open the document that I just uploaded. And um, yeah, but other than that, you can go to files because you know it's in the shared documents. You can go to files and then documents, you'll see the document here, which was uploaded about a minute ago. And yeah, that's how you can post your um, Microsoft Forms responses in in um, in Teams. What you can also do, of course, is instead of just um, instead of just having here the information about the document, you can also use also use also use. Let me see here. Yeah. Well, you can also use the response details. I mean, the rest of them who who was it what type of car and so on engine and so on and so forth no? so you can you can paste all of that information here as well that's up to you feel free to do it whatever however you like okay so i think that's it for this video um, i hope i covered everything and um, let me know if it's something you didn't understand or that you you missed or it's not working let me know in the comments and I will try to help you as much as I can. I hope you liked it. If you did so, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Have a nice one. Bye.